Okay, so Pi News episode 95. So first up, let's have a look at my channel and see what was mentioned since the last Pi News. So in the last Pi News, I mentioned the 16 gig Pi 5 was coming soon. I actually already had one, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Uh, but I was also given the wrong release date by a week. So I think this video came out on the release date for the little Chewy N100 tablet, which was great, but I already had a Pi 5 16 gig. Uh, and so I released it probably about a week later. And it's very impressive. You've still got to work out what you need it for, but definitely AI was the one thing that, that really seemed to tax RAM. Uh, so those big large language models do definitely like more RAM. We had a proper boot menu where you can press and hold the spacebar. I was tapping the spacebar in the video, but you can press and hold the spacebar and then boot from NVMe, USB, SD card. A really nice addition for someone like me who's regularly changing their operating system and testing things. I put the 16 gig Raspberry Pi inside the Raspad 3, so I made a 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5 tablet and put KDE Plasma Mobile on there, which I really enjoyed. I talked about some of the operating systems not working on the newer variant Raspberry Pi 5. So basically the two gig and the 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5 and the Compute Module 5 and the Raspberry Pi 500 use a newer version of the processor, even though it's very similar. It does mean that a lot of operating systems which were designed for the four gig and eight gig Pi 5 won't work on these other models, but have a look at the video if you're interested in it. Uh, I also tried an AI chatbot for the first time so I ran DeepSeek locally on my Raspberry Pi 5. It was pretty slow because of the large amount of data on there, but it was definitely good and uh, really impressive. Managed to get an NVMe install of Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi 5 and showed how to do it in this tutorial. Definitely makes it a lot faster. A bit more on that later on in the video. I got sent a link to a video on how to get Wadroid or Android running within Raspberry Pi OS or within Linux. I'd done it before on x64 machines but I'd never managed to get it working on a Raspberry Pi. It actually works great on a Raspberry Pi and there's a video not showing here but basically Thursday's video I've uh, updated my version of KDE Plasma so that you can very easily install Android in it and I also tested Alma Linux as well which is more for professional users with the Red Hat side of it which is not me uh, as others have pointed out in the comments. But I always like to try new different operating systems and see what they're about. Let's get rid of that. And I've got this coming today, or in fact, a parcel which contains this. I've got a picture on my desktop. I'm not sure why I opened with Firefox. But uh, yeah, I've got various different things coming from Electro Cookie. And the one thing I was really, really impressed with as soon as they mentioned it to me is the access to the NVMe drive. So if we have a look at the listing, so just the fact that it's got a door for me is brilliant because I'm always getting access to the NVMe drive and swapping it out and things like that. And not having a door on there means you either leave a door off or you, you make some other arrangement that it's easier to get into. But the fact that it's got a door, simple, but really, really useful for me. Uh, it also is designed to take an NVMe hat, obviously, uh, comes with a proper cooler and a fan. There is a different version. This one here, 3199. You can see that they've got a cutout in the middle of it and the way that they've mounted it is different. And I guess that's all about the door and everything, but I'll do a video on that. But I thought I'd just show it. Uh, I'm excited that it's coming today. Video coming soon. We had an update to the Raspberry Pi EEPROM. So EEPROM is a bit like a BIOS. It's, it's the sort of start bit on a Raspberry Pi 5 when it boots. Raspberry Pi 4 did something similar as well. We get updates of this to make things work better. This is an interesting one. So we've already got the press and hold space for a boot menu, but it's got add set reboot order API and config.txt properties. If set reboot order is defined in config.txt or set via VC mailbox. Typically the config.txt value only be used via RPI boot to override the boot order on the next reboot, otherwise it should reside in a conditional section so that the boot order is not open. I mean, it, there's a lot of words there. I w it looks like you can set what it boots from and you can even do that remotely. So uh, if you've got a Pi that you're using, I guess you could write a different operating system to another storage medium and then reboot it from that. Uh, so you've, you've really got complete control over the Pi remotely. I'm guessing I'll have a look at it 
and try and work out exactly what it is. I'm sure there'll be better details on the forums. Improve SD RAM refresh timings for Pi 5 16 gig, so we might see a bit better performance. Add an option to wait for the power button to be pressed before booting. If power off, on halt, and wait for power button one in the bootloader. So it looks like you could power up the Pi, but it won't boot up unless you press the button as an option. Because at the moment, if you just turn on power, it just boots up. Update SD RAM timings for the, the D variant, so the ones I was mentioning earlier on, Compute Module 5, uh, Raspberry Pi 500, and the 2 gig and 16 gig model Pi 5s. And I guess it will happen to all of them. They'll all be the D variant in the future, like newer boards being built when they run out of the older C variants. Move M.2 hat plus detection to early boot. Initialize M.2 plus detection before DDR to give NVMe drive firmware more time to boot. I wonder if that means we're gonna get more compatibility with NVMe drives, because there are definitely some NVMe's that don't work properly on a Pi 5. I did a separate video on it. Add net install to boot menu, press N or shift. So net install, whereas uh, if you've got no operating system that boots, you can install it from the internet. So you can boot up Raspberry Pi Imager and install something. So if you have blank SD card or an NVMe drive attached to your Pi and tried to boot it up, it would let you install an operating system as long as you've got internet. So all sorts of things in there, have a read through if you're interested in it. Obviously, the EEPROM will update on its own with a normal update with Raspberry Pi OS, but you can sort of force it to get onto a newer one if you need to. So next up, very pleased to see that Jose, who makes PyKiss, which is a very easy installer for Raspberry Pi, is still adding content. So we've got Carmageddon Death Race, Half-Life 2, and also Portal. I did try Half-Life 2, and for me, unfortunately, it's not working. I tried it on Pi 4 and Pi 5, but some of the necessary files didn't work, uh, and so it keeps going back to this bit. And even if I try and launch it, I could start it with terminal here, but it's coming up with a message. Carmageddon is working great. So if I go to games, you don't need anything else, just the install script for this. This is just the demo. So let's just go straight in. I did have to reconfigure some of the keys because it wants to use the num keys, and I don't have those on this keyboard, as it's a bit of a cut down one. So I've just reconfigured, like the old Spectrum days. And this was a game that was banned back in the day for its extreme gore. You can see there's red paint in a lot of places. I've had to cut one of the bits out just now, just in case. But uh, yeah, it, it was a really enjoyable game. Crazy handling and uh, there was versions with zombies in because that was deemed to be more acceptable. Anyway, great to see. And the Half-Life was really clever. It links to your Steam account and you put your username and your password in and uh, I've got Steam Guard on mine so I had to do the Steam Guard bit and uh, it downloads it from your account but I'm not sure if I had exactly the right version um, but uh, I might play around with that a bit more, see if I can get it to work. Chris Edwards Restoration did an update on PyMega 500, so basically PyMega, which is the Commodore Amiga on Pi, he made it work for the Pi 4 and Pi 5, but the Pi 500 didn't have sound and a few things didn't work because of the D variant chip. He's updated it now and uh, the sound works fine and it, it, it works brilliant on a Pi 500, which is a nice natural home for it because it's a computer and a keyboard. We had a, an update to Wine, and specifically they're mentioning ARM devices. Wine is running Windows within Linux, and there's been a big update with Wine 10 to give better support with ARM. This is from the register, so I need to have a play around with that and see what's improved. Had uh, an email from 5 Minute Tech Time. Uh, they've made a Matrix-style Raspberry Pi case, so you can see here with a nice little LED display on the side. I won't play the video, but if I skip through, in fact, I will play a little bit of it because he's asked me to show it. Uh, this has got the matrix display on the side as well. I like the way these little LEDs are dancing around as well. A couple of fans in there. It's got the official cooler. I'll link it in the description if you want to have a look at that. It's even got a speaker on the top, it looks like. I bookmarked this video a while ago, never got around to doing it. 
let's make RetroPie run PS2 games. This is Make or Break Society, and uh, it's just a tutorial to add PS2 into RetroPie because it's not officially in the ARM-based version. It's also not in Recallbox, also not in Batacera. So there isn't a build apart from Supreme RetroPie that has PS2 built into it. Uh, so this allows you to download the standard RetroPie and then add it to it. I've been trying out Batacera with Wii and GameCube. I've done a few shorts videos on that and that's been pretty good actually. <laughs> Uh, but they still don't have PS2 in Batacera. Not sure why, because PS2 does run really well in it now. The emulator e Ether SX2 doesn't get an update, and I see the video wants to prompt me to my video, so I did a tutorial on how to install it in Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu and various different tweaks and things. But this is running within a multi-ROM emulator system rather than running in a desktop environment. Tom's Hardware did this story, Maker builds Raspberry Pi jukebox and loads it full of custom music. And you can see it looks very nice. Creating this fantastic Raspberry Pi powered jukebox project. Built around a Raspberry Pi 4. Built the housing from scratch, custom artwork. Software has been spruced up with a custom skin to look like a jukebox interface. It's a 32 inch monitor, so it's pretty big. Coin slot functions, RGB LED strip. Just a really nice project. Love to see the insides of it. Next up uh, on Facebook. Now this is from a while ago, but I forgot to include it in previous Pi News. So I always like to see Raspberry Pis in the world. And you can see this display screen has Raspberry Pis on it. It's a pretty big screen and it's obviously meant to do uh, some sort of simulation in these windows. I guess the others are probably Raspberry Pis as well. Really nice to see. And I also saw this on Facebook, and it's basically a Lego retro radio. But they put a Raspberry Pi, what's that, 4 it looks like? Oh no, it must be older because it's got the full size HDMI. So uh, I guess it's a Raspberry Pi 3. Let's have a look, there's a link to the story. It does look nice. You can see the Lego parrot next to it as well. The good news is you can not only put a Raspberry Pi inside, but also connect it up. So the tuning knob on the retro radio controls the music playback. One of my first Raspberry Pi cases was made with Lego. So I'll link this in there if you're looking to do something similar to this. Oh, we've got some glue going on here with some of the buttons. That is a Raspberry Pi 4. Another one here from Tom's Hardware Maker turns Raspberry Pi into a wireless USB flash drive for an embroidery machine. So you can see the machine here and some nice dual monitor setup. Integrating that fully with Wi-Fi. Maker and developer, the Feral Engineer, has taken the idea a step further by using a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W as a flash drive that can be updated over Wi-Fi. That's cool. I could do that for my 3D printer. My 3D printer is in the garage, and so I always go out there and get the USB stick and just bring it in. But that would be a, an easier option. Or I could just properly network my 3D printer. Yeah, very nice. So Raspberry Pi OS Lite. The Pi is then programmed into gadget mode and set up so the embroidery machine can recognize it as a USB device that's also accessible as a network device. Yeah, really cool. Also we had this solar powered wildlife monitor using a Raspberry Pi AI hat plus to track birds. And this is what these AI hats are for. So they're really good with images and speeding up the recognition, but also using low power. It's the solar panel. Oh, and there's a video linked in here as well. So have a look at that if you're interested in doing something like that. This is from Hackster.io. Tom's hardware again, Raspberry Pi Pico secure. Delivery box helps protect your packages. So you can see there's an outside box with all sorts of bits in there, like 12 volt battery, Pico 2W, 12 volt siren. And we had this from CNX Software. V-Link leverages GMSL2 to extend Raspberry Pi camera with up to 15 meter cable. Obviously we use these flat cables for cameras on Raspberry Pi, but they tend not to go to really great lengths, but this is extending it so that you can get it much, much further away from the computer so you can just have the camera remotely. So if your project needs something like that. And the last one, so I mentioned about Windows 11 earlier on getting it to run on an NVMe drive. Unfortunately, the project doesn't seem to be working on anymore. Like the, this repository is no longer maintained and has been archived. You still get updates in the issue, so it's still worth looking at. So it was a bit sad, but people are obviously still trying to get it get it working on those newer pies. So watch this space. Oh, and I'll finish on a positive note. So if I go to my channel, 
I've reached 100,000 subscribers. So thanks very much to everybody who subscribed. Thanks very much to people who like the videos and also comment on them. Comments definitely help a lot on YouTube. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.